In this video, I'm going to share with you my entire web design project checklist step by step from the second you get a new lead come into your inbox to handing over the final website to your clients. So that by the end of this video, you will confidently be able to carry out my entire web design process with your own clients from start to finish. In the previous two videos, I went through my client process from start to finish and also my entire web design process. And this video is going to put both of these together to give you a complete checklist to follow. Now it's going to be a lot all at once, especially if you're completely new to this. So I'll leave the timestamps below and you can save this and refer back to it later. All the templates that I'm using are available in this bundle below, but otherwise in this video, I'm going to be going through this complete SOP checklist to follow for yourself. And for those of you who don't know, an SOP is a standard operating procedure, basically a list of steps detailing every stage of your process so that if you were to give this to someone else, they could take this and implement it themselves. The benefit of having this, first of all, is that it saves you a lot of time. You're never sat down feeling overwhelmed. You always know exactly what you need to do and you can just get on with it. And having a clear process like this literally kills your procrastination and will cut your project times in half. It also makes it really easy to identify the tasks that you can outsource or automate. There are a lot of tasks here in this checklist that even I could be automating better than I am right now. And for those tasks that you can't automate, having this SOP ideally means that you just give this to someone else and they'll be able to carry out this process for you which is why I wanted to share it with you because I've been getting a lot of questions about the technical details of carrying out a web design process and hopefully this will clear up a lot of these questions and explain the decisions that I'm making at each stage of the process now in the previous video I go into a lot more detail about how to actually carry out each stage of this process like holding sales calls and putting together an in-depth website strategy but I want to stick to just giving a more broad overview in this video so that by the end you'll have a much clearer understanding of the entire process from start to finish. So the tools that I'm going to be using in this video are this Notion dashboard. This is my CRM. So where I organize all my clients and projects, and you can grab this template below, or if you're already using a CRM setup, then you can easily implement the steps here within your own dashboard. I'm going to be using Framer for the web design, and I have my website templates already set up and ready to go in there. And so my checklists are optimized for designing in Framer, but if you're using any other website platform, then it's going to be very similar. So every project starts with a new inquiry come into your inbox. Now throughout this process, you'll see these decision boxes. So the first decision here, when you get this inquiry, is this client a good fit? Then depending on the answer to this question, we have two email templates ready to go so that you can respond to this inquiry as quickly as possible. So alongside this checklist, I have this database of email templates ready to go, which you can also import into your Gmail or automation software. So this email template already has my calendar link inside of it. So my client could just book in a call with me. So whenever you see a milestone box like this one here, never move past this point until this is complete. You'll see this at almost every stage throughout this process, and this will stop you getting ahead of yourself and wasting time if something goes wrong or a project just doesn't work out. And so as soon as this discovery call is booked, I will then come into my Notion dashboard and follow this checklist. So I'm going to add my client into Notion, create a discovery call, which already has a template ready to go, add my notes from the inquiry form, check the dates in my calendar for my next available project dates, and then add a quote or a rough budget range if known. So now I'm ready to jump on a call at any time. And I already have this sales script right here. So all I need to do is follow the prompts and secure the project. So then at the end of a sales call, we have another decision box here. If the sales call does not go well, it's clear this client is not a good fit. They don't have the budget or you just can't deliver what they're asking for. You just get off this call here and then there's an email template that you can send them for this. But if it did go well, then you can let the client know that you'll put together a written proposal. So then after getting off this call, you want to have this sent over to them as quickly as possible. So again, we have our templates ready to go and we just follow this checklist. The next step here is to create a new project. We're going to add in our dates and all the details and then connect it to the client. And then within here, we have a client portal that we're gonna customize. Now you don't have to have a client portal, but I like using it because it keeps everything that I need for the project in the same place and the client can see it as well. And it just delivers that high-end experience. And so to customize this, we're gonna add the name, fill in the proposal and add the details from our sales call with the templates that are in here. Then what I do is lock this proposal and then come into my contract software to create the contract. And so there's a 
contract template in here, but you're going to want to have this set up in a software that allows you to take digital signatures. So like DocuSign or Dubsado like I have here. And once you have all this set up, you just link the contract in Notion, create an invoice in Stripe for the deposit, and then also link this back to Notion. And so we're using a couple of different softwares here, but we're linking it all back in the same place. And so there's a central hub where your client can get all of this. And so with these templates and this checklist, this takes around 10, maybe 15 minutes. And so the last thing that I wanna do before sending it over to the client is film a Loom video. So I wanna let them know that I'm excited for the project, give them a tour of this client portal, and then just show them what I want them to do next to confirm the project. And then once that's done, there's a checklist here to send the proposal over to your client. Share the client portal with their email address, copy the link to the client portal, and then just put it in this email template in Gmail. And so in under 15 minutes, we've sent our client everything they need to guide them through their proposal, signing their contract and paying their invoice. Now, if you don't hear from the client, then this decision box will let you know what to do next. So you wanna follow up once and then if not, let it go because to be honest, this client is probably ghosting you. So then as soon as the client signs the contract and pays the invoice, you wanna head over into Stripe and schedule all your invoices for the project. And this will automatically send your client the invoice and remind them so you can just schedule it and forget about it. Then you want to create the Calendly link for the strategy meeting and I usually want to do this Monday to Wednesday on the first week of the project. I also have automatic reminders within Calendly so that when they book this meeting they get a reminder one week before that their questionnaire is due and a meeting reminder one day before the actual meeting. And then the last thing I want to do is create a Google Drive folder for the clients to upload their website images and add this into their client portal. Then you just want to come in here and update the project status in the client portal and send the project confirmed email template. Now, once you kind of standardize your projects and start working with the same type of clients over and over again, you can automate a lot of this stuff. So you can make an automation so that when you add a project or a client into Notion, it will automatically create an invoice in Stripe. It will automatically create a Calendly booking link for you. And it will automatically create a Google Drive folder. And so eventually you are gonna wanna do these things, but right now you just wanna follow this checklist and make sure you have the right project workflow and really streamline this process. And so this decision decision box is one that you'll see a lot throughout this process. If there is a deadline and the client hasn't met that, you want to follow up on the due date and then pause the project if they miss that deadline by more than three days. And so as soon as the client has filled in their questionnaire and booked their strategy call, we can move on to the prep work. So we're getting into the research and the strategy part now, and this is no different. You still want to systemize this process to get the best results. As a designer, when your job is to be creative and come up with new ideas, sometimes it can feel like you struggle to be creative on demand, but having a clear process to get you going starts to build that muscle and so you can be creative on demand when you need to be. So we've got a clear process here to start our research. We're going to take the answers from our client questionnaire and then run them through the chat GPT prompts that we have here and this is going to help get the ideas flowing. And then this strategy deck template walks you through the strategy part of this process and allows you to easily fill in the gaps with all of your notes. And then I'll also start to add notes to the website copy templates to give ideas and clarifying questions to ask your client. And then then we'll create a strategy meeting in Notion with the script ready to go and then link these up to go through in your meeting. So I have a script set up for the strategy meeting. I start every call by setting the context and then I wanna take the client through the strategy deck, the messaging, the audience, competitor analysis, marketing strategy, and design direction. At each stage, you wanna to remember to ask for feedback and clarification. So then once you've got feedback on all of these sections and you've agreed on the strategy, the next stage is gonna be taking your client through the web website content. So as always, we have a template ready to go for this. There is no stage of this process that you don't want to have a template set up. In the strategy meeting, I'm going to be taking my client through these website copy templates. Now, if you're offering copywriting as part of your service, you can just ask the client to go in and fill out the SEO and additional information pages in as much detail as possible. And then just ask them to leave their notes in the rest of the templates because you're then going to take this information and write it up for them properly. But if they are providing their own copy, these templates give them everything they need to write the website copy for themselves. And you haven't got to do a thing because these are all set up and ready to go. So by the end of the meeting, the client should know exactly what they need to do next and you should have agreed the strategy with them and know what changes you need to make moving forward. After the meeting, you'll finalize this deck in Figma and upload it to the client portal. And then you have another email template ready to go, just reminding them of the next steps and letting them know where they can leave their feedback for the strategy deck. At this point, you're either waiting for your client to get back to you with their complete 
needed website copy, or you're gonna be taking their answers from the website copy templates and completing this part for them. And so if it's option two, once the strategy deck is approved and the content and images are uploaded, then we'll go onto the copywriting checklist. So I really used to hate writing website copy, and I know a lot of web designers choose not to offer this for this exact reason, but learning how to write sales copy is not just what clients pay you a lot of money for, but it is essential for running your own business too. And there's a simple formula that works for copywriting that is very easy to template. So that's exactly what I've done here. And so when you're writing your copy, you wanna be thinking about SEO at the same time. So you wanna start with some keyword research so you can define the target keywords for each page. And then using the strategy deck, you wanna pull the key messaging and start to go through each of these pages, filling all these sections in. There is also an SEO checklist for each page. So you can run through this and optimize the page title, meta description and headers. And so these templates breaks this whole thing down really easily so anyone can do this, which is why you can give this straight to your clients or to a copywriter if you're outsourcing this. Then once you've proofread this, you can send it over and have your client review it. And once that's done, you can get to designing. To make sure that you can really get into the flow when you're designing, you wanna go through this checklist and get all your assets ready. You wanna resize and compress your images, rename them using relevant keywords, and then get your logo and favicon ready. And so we're working in Framer for this. And if you already have your website templates set up, then you just need to make a copy of these. And then using the sitemap that I put together in the strategy deck, I'm gonna create all the pages and lay out all the content sections. And so I have this checklist organized here in the exact order that is gonna optimize and speed up your workflow. If you're also working from this Framer template, then these are the exact steps in the exact order that I would follow. But if you're working in another platform, the order that you do everything in may vary, but the general process is gonna be pretty similar. This is gonna offer you a good starting point to write out your own process. We're starting with the global assets and the site styles first, and these will then implement across the website template before you even get into the nitty gritty of designing each section. We're gonna design the homepage and get approval on this before we design the rest of the site. So you already have your content approved and ready to copy in, your design style approved in your strategy deck and an exact step-by-step -step order to follow here for each section. So technically you could just give this to someone and have them do this. Then when you're happy with the homepage, you wanna upload it to the feedback section of the client portal and there are specific questions ready for the client to answer here. Once that's approved and any revisions have been made, then you work your way through designing the rest of the pages. And again, there's a specific order that you wanna follow here because all of these content sections are set up as components. So the content section sections you designed on the home page have already started implementing throughout the rest of the website. And so you can just attach these and add in the unique content to each page. For example, you might use the same testimonial section on every page, but the hero section would vary for every page. So we're streamlining the design process using this checklist. Then once the entire web design is approved, the next step is to get the payment from your client. If you've already scheduled your invoices and stuck to the right timeline for this project, the client will have already received their invoice and hopefully paid it on time. Again, you cannot move past this point until this invoice is paid. So once they have paid, there are two options. If you are going to be offering ongoing website maintenance, then you can keep the client's site in your Framer account. What you would then do is include the site plan and any cost for additional users within the price of your monthly website maintenance. And then these are the steps that you would take to set up an agreement for this. This isn't something that I like to do, but it's definitely an option for you. What I like to do is transfer it to my client's account, which is as easy as just creating a link. So whichever platform you're working in, if you Google this, there should be documentation on how to transfer a website to your client's account. But in Framer, all you need to do is create this remix link. The client will then create their own account and you wanna make sure that they're set up on a paid plan. And then you will use the remix link to import it into their account. Once this is done, you have your pre-launch optimization list to make your way through before you're ready to launch and you want to make sure you do this after you transfer it because some of this information does not transfer when you're using a remix link. So you have your site and page settings, URL structures, compliance and policies, accessibility checks and technical checks. And when you're done with this, if the client isn't ready to launch right away, you can add a passcode so that they can just remove this when they're ready to launch. And then all you need to do is publish their site by hitting this button and then connect connect a custom domain. And it's really that easy, it's ready to go. So at this point, leaving a client feeling happy and confident with their new website 
habits is one of the most important factors in the success of your project. So there are some easy things that you can do to leave the project on a good note that won't take longer than 10 minutes. So the first thing you'll want to do is record a quick Loom video. This should congratulate the client on their new website, show them how to remove the password when they're ready to launch, show them where they can find their website training videos within their client portal, and then explain how post-launch support works. So I offer 30 days post-launch support. This doesn't include any extra designing, but it does include any questions or issues that they might have. Then there are two emails that you can schedule and forget about. So there's the email reminder that the support period is ending and you wanna do this five days before this period ends. And then there's a testimonial request. And ideally you wanna do this four to six weeks post-launch to give the client time to get some results that they can then put in their testimonial. And if a client isn't launching their website straight away, which often happens, then make sure to send an email to congratulate them on their launch when they finally make their website live. And so that is the complete workflow from start to finish. I hope this gives you a good overview and a starting point to streamline your own process. If you're interested in seeing a behind the scenes look at me actually carrying out this process, then hit the follow because over the next few videos, I'm gonna be breaking down an actual client project from start to finish. So if there are any questions or things that you are struggling with in your own client process, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to include them in an upcoming video.